Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to a new episode, a very special episode of NK's Conversations. Now, this episode is really special for a very simple reason, because we're going to talk today about kids who are special. Now, these kids are special because they depend upon you for everything from their personal hygiene to their growth and development. And throughout their life, from the time they are infants till the time they are no longer with us, they remain our special kids. But handling them, looking after them, helping them develop, that is a very difficult journey for parents. And that is what we are going to talk about today. I have with me as my guest uh, on this show, Mr. Eric de Souza. Now, he is a parent of a special child and he has personal experience of what it is to bring up a special child in the difficult environment that we live in today. Eric, welcome to the show. I know this, this could be a really uh, difficult uh, situation for you to handle. Coming in front of the camera and talking about your personal life and your child who is special. Very true. But Very sometimes, true. but sometimes it's necessary so that the right message goes across to the powers that be and they can intervene and help us out in our difficulties. And that is the purpose of this show. Uh, Eric, uh, of course, has been, is a veteran from the media and advertising industry and has lived all his life in Bombay, although he was born in Mangalore. He has now re returned to Mangalore to re after retirement and he is still with his special child, bringing him up, looking after him. He has taken time out today to be with us because he considers it important, we consider it important as newscarnataka.com to bring this message to society and to the world and of course to the government. So Eric, uh, uh, let me just start by asking you what took you to Bombay and what brought you back? Yeah, hello Brian, uh, good afternoon friends. Good afternoon. Um, thank you Brian for uh, bringing me here and uh, thank you News Karnataka for this opportunity to put my views across. Um, I was uh, born in Bombay, but when I was one year old, I was uh, 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 I came to Mangalore and I grew up in Mangalore. I studied in St. Aloysius uh, School, uh, very fond memories of that, till the 8th standard. Then uh, I had to go back to Bombay with my, because my grandmother had expired here. And uh, then I continued my schooling, my college and uh, my working all in Bombay. I retired in uh, two years back and uh, since I am a Mangalorean, and uh, I grew up here, I thought this was my pavilion. Uh, so I am back to the pavilion, I am very comfortable here and uh, will uh, lead the remaining years of my life, my sunset years, I think I will uh, spend and enjoy in Mangalore. So you have just one child and that <coughs> child is special. So just tell me about that, exp uh, that, that uh, how that happened and what was the background of that? Uh, well, we got uh, married in uh, 1990. Uh, I got married to a Mangalorean girl. In 1996, uh, we were thrilled, you know, God blessed us with a healthy uh, baby uh, boy of 9 pounds. Uh, things were very good for us. We were a nuclear family. So the joy, of course, he, my son was born here, but within six months or five months, we went back to Bombay. Bombay, we were a nuclear family and uh, it was our first child. So the whole, the whole experience of, you know, bringing up the child was fascinating. It was great. Uh, it, was, it was a very good experience uh, though. Um, <clears throat> but somewhere the, along the line, in all that enthusiasm and fun of bringing up a, a, a baby, you know, we felt that things were not uh, going okay. Something was uh, something was wrong somewhere, because fortunately or unfortunately, my neighbor also uh, delivered at the same time, so they were both almost of the same age. And when comparing, you know, I felt that my son was not uh, was not uh, developing like the way my neighbor's kid was uh, developing. For example. Within six months or something, my neighbor's son started speaking. My son didn't speak. And that way there were a lot of uh, issues which I felt were not normal in a normal growing uh, baby. Uh, but 
we didn't take anything amiss because uh, and then you have all the neighbors and your elders your aunts aunties everybody coming in and giving their expert opinion and they found that finally they found that uh, i you know when i was a kid i spoke at 4 <laughs> you know so i said don't worry don't worry you spoke at 4 very late so you know your son also will be okay no problem sort of thing but later i came to know there's nothing called late milestones you know which i want everybody to know you know that if anybody tells you that you know your baby is late milestone please don't believe it there nothing is late milestones the babe there is a particular schedule for the infant like they have to sit maybe i think at the first month by third month they have to turn over by 11th month or 8th month they have to speak and that sort of thing there's a particular schedule and if your infant or baby you know does not uh, what to say show the signs at that particular uh, ma- day or month or whatever like after 7 weeks then something is wrong so please please keep a watch you know uh, a keen watch you know on your infant's baby if they are not following those milestones please take it seriously consult a doctor and then you know uh, take it up from there and eliminate okay so yeah. what happened uh, once you uh, you found oh. something i missed then what happened? okay okay so uh, once uh, uh, it was at justlock that we we came to know about that and it was earth shattering for us our whole collapse <laughs> we didn't know what hit us because everything was going on uh, beautifully till then uh, then started the a uh, journey you know like to say like you know now covid is the times now like before covid a time will come let them uh, say before covid after covid like that for us it was uh, before that particular test you know done and after that test our life changed everything changed he turned out to be multiply challenged a brain damaged child and uh, uh, then started the journey of looking after him because he was termed as multiply challenged which means that there were a lot of different problem with him uh, he was is mildly autistic is mildly speech problem speech impediment speech impediment is mildly autistic like i said he is had got a, a fine motor problem he has got a, a different mildly spastic so there are different problems so he is multiply challenged now uh, started the journey of looking after him how do we look after a special child who cannot understand anything he had no understanding at all um, so to explain to him for him to make him understand to make us understand what he feels like what he wants was becoming quite a challenge for us and uh, uh, so it became it was becoming more and more difficult from all, all angles even from medical point of view from his living point of view from education point of view you know it was uh, quite a challenge i would say yes yeah, so you were working at that time and yes. uh, uh how did you i mean how did you cope with the uh, situation uh, uh there is no choice you know we are the parents of a special child and uh, i can't give up my job we require the finances i have to work uh, even just working i have to do well at my job it was quite a challenge i would say and there is no uh, rocket science to know that there is no choice Uh, you cannot go anywhere you cannot do anything it is your baby you are you are left holding the baby and nobody is really going to come to your help like society you know everybody will just give you lip service and ultimately it's your baby you have to take care so yes i, I was very lucky that uh, my wife turned out to be an excellent mother you know and she really coped with the with her uh, with with the with her uh, uh, role as a mother and a special role as a mother of a special child uh, my job was a very diff- difficult type of job i am in media I go in the morning come in the night you know so all those uh, things were there and and even our job you know even if it's a holiday sunday we have to go to work you know that sort of thing so it was very difficult for me but uh, whatever time i spent at home i tried my level best to you know to help and to relieve uh, my wife uh from her duties but that i but i must admit that she bore say 80% of the of the burden of uh, bringing up a special child okay um so what i wanted to understand from you now the child was growing up and you were finding it difficult to communicate with him correct and he was finding it obviously difficult to communicate with yes. you uh what was the uh, what did you all think you all should do 
at that point of time? I mean, uh, <coughs> as he was growing up. What, happened? what about some special training and uh, yes. uh, therapeutic uh, uh, interventions? Uh, yes. Did you uh, think of any such things? Correct, correct. See, at, uh, when, he was, when he was three years, you know, we felt that something was seriously wrong okay uh, with him so we thought we were something was wrong with us as parents you know we are not able to bring up the child understand the child so we went to an expert uh, uh, through a professional uh, doctor dr mike replani who is you know a, very good in these things you know so uh, she was a marriage counselor plus uh, a pediatric some, uh, something like that uh, went to her and uh, we, we we thought we were going to half an hour interview uh, sorry half an hour session with her but remember my son, you know, he had a fall. Luckily, he had a fall in front of my doctor or the doctor. Doctor saw him falling and said, see, I don't like the look of his fall. So I think nothing is wrong with you. Something is wrong with the child. So that was the beginning, you know, of our entire uh, other journey. All the tests were done. Three days we spent there. And then she said, uh, uh, Eric and Rina, you know, your child is special. You'll have to change everything. You'll have to look at new uh, avenues. To see how you can uh, bring up your child, then we had to go to a doctor. The first step was to meet uh, a pediatric neurologist, you know. And luckily, we had a, uh, there was a very good doctor in Bombay, Dr. Uh, um, I forget the name, Dr. Udwadia. Uh, uh, so she was very good. And then she also did all the tests, and then she, under her guidance, we started dealing with uh, our special child but also see God also gives you uh, God also created you in such a manner that that motherly fatherly parental instincts are there you know so that came to the fore in our case it being our first baby and we sort of managed to not only bring him up as a baby and from infancy to a baby we also be able to manage this uh, his uh, uh, brain damage uh, uh, situation. Of course, uh, there are a lot of, we read a lot, we talked to a lot of people about it, a lot of people give us a lot of advice and all that. But ultimately, uh, bringing up these children, there are two people are very involved. One is a doctor who is a neurologist. Uh, then come the other doctor like uh, physiotherapist and all that sort of thing. But mainly it's the neurologist. And then you have the special educator. You know, yeah. which is very, very important. So these two people play a very vital role uh, in the life of the bringing up of a special child. Then there are other small, small people who contribute, like I told you, the physiotherapist and uh, there are a lot many other uh, people. So I think the parents, uh, um, you know, the parents of the child, they go through a lot when, we, when you have a, a situation like this. And uh, as they go, as they deal with the child, they learn a lot. They listen to a lot of people. Uh, they also use, as you said, their, their parently, uh, motherly and fatherly instincts to deal with the situation. So now, how old is Renver, uh, Eric? Uh, Renver is 25 years now. And you came down to Mangalore uh, from Bombay? Uh, last, uh, in uh, Jan of uh, 2018. Okay. One and a half year back. One and a half year back. And since then, he has been going for some physiotherapy and... Uh, y yes, yes. yes. Uh, in Bombay, um, uh, in uh, this whole process started in Bombay. Uh, there were not many schools there. Um, they, I tried to admit him to uh, sc special schools. But then I realized that uh, all are not special schools. You know, this, in special schools also there is a speciality as such. So went to an autistic school. So they said, uh, no, he's not fully autistic. He's mildly autistic. He does not belong here. Then we went to a, a dumb school. They said, he's not fully dumb. You know, he can speak a few words. He does not belong here. We went to a spastic school. They said, he's mildly spastic. So there was no school for a multiply challenged child. Mm -hmm. So I happened to meet uh, one doctor, Mr. Uh, Jhangir Afshari, you know, who ha was running a therapy center because we had to give my child five different therapies, speech therapy, occupational therapy, uh, um, uh, different therapies we had to give. 
and uh, he were all under one roof uh, he was there you know human development center so i chatted with him i said this is all fine but what happens to the education of the child what happens later he said there is no school you know i said i know there is no school i'd gone to all so what do we do can we do something he said yes you know i was planning to start a school but you know uh, how to do it alone you know so i said okay i'm there with you i'll do it so i i as a co-founding benefactor you know we started a school called little angels in bandra and uh, that was basically for this multiple challenge it was an ngo to begin with and uh, started so ran was started going uh, going there uh, and then once this started then everything falls into place uh, basically this school being a special educator he will analyze the child see what his strengths weaknesses are see which areas that he needs to be which areas need to be addressed what all can be done and then in that field you know once you are identified as a special child and once you once you come under professional guidance then you know everything is set the required personnel keep coming like the counselor and the physiotherapist and different different people they come into play the psychiatrist also is very very important in this case because not only a year one point i want to make is it is not only the child who requires all this therapy the parents also require that therapy and both have to match otherwise you know it will be apples and oranges it will not gel and uh, the child is not going to benefit so this is something which uh, we learned and this you have to keep in mind so both require that counseling and that uh, therapy yes yeah, so and, you yeah, and yes after coming to mangalore yeah. yes uh, i looked around for a couple of and here they sent agnes special school which is dealing with all these children so we knew the sister maria jyoti from a long time so when it came here we put him to sent agnes special school and they are experts they are uh, good in the field for a long time and they handle the child and uh, uh, for some time when he is going to the school you parents are at peace at home because you don't have that tension of uh, probably looking at uh, him struggling uh, and he is also learning and developing but ultimately i think um, there was this lockdown 3 months ago and then the situation changed so can you just <laughs> tell me <laughs> i know i know it's uh, it's difficult comedy of life or you know something like that we had come down to about one and a half year back and in the last one uh, like uh, 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 he was going to the special school and everything was set you know uh, the his whole program for the day because these children they have to be kept occupied all the time like the mind has to be diverted all the time they can't be left idle they'll eat your brains so i had prepared a a, a program for him Uh, shall i elaborate the full thing yeah yeah please uh, like, I, 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 we had uh, made a, pro, a, a program for him for the entire day a schedule like we should get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, by 6 o'clock we used to be at kadri park one hour there there is to meet all the people who come to walk there and most of them were uh, senior citizens he made good friends there and about 10 12 to old uh, uncles were there you know and they should interact with him they want they should look forward to him coming and my son was looking forward to him going there and meeting meeting them after that he used to come home by 9 o'clock breakfast all that happened bath and all that 9:30 we had to go for physiotherapy session at uh, vikas college of physiotherapy there one and a half hour doctor rakesh was there he would uh, administer the physiotherapy and there there all students were there and all that so all of them would come and it was a great enjoyable session that ran we would enjoy it session there at the same time he would get his uh, physiotherapy after that he would go to the school you know there also this uh, physiotherapy uh, vikas college you know they requested us can we come and you know do, conduct our sessions there in that in that center you know so which is uh, veronica center you know uh, so they would come there spend two hours there and there they would they would you know have a holistic approach they would have speech therapy they would have occupational therapy they would they would look at the at the uh, children speech at uh, everything like uh, they would have dancing sessions they would have game sessions so all round development of the particular individual there are about 16 inmates there plus uh, two other boys like like renbo like my son renbo so about 18 of them they would spend about 2 hours there till 1 o'clock that was another very enjoyable session educative session and it was really constructive sessions the inmates the special children were all 
benefited uh, by that then there would be lunch after lunch we had started one vocational training center there itself in veronica uh, center where they would be making paper bags you know uh, sachets and paper bags so that was they had to be kept occupied and we thought that if these children could develop some skill you know it would help them later on into earning some pocket money or whatever so that started so after lunch between 2 to 4 was that uh, vocational training center after that uh, 4 30 5 would come home by 5 30 i have to take him for a drive that was very special for him he loves drives with music so take him for 6 to 7 drive come back 7 his uh, bath his dinner by 8 8 30 back to bed whole thing was going perfectly well we used to get our free time we used to get relaxed we used to feel that a uh, let up you know from looking after Renver how he comes from home Renver was happy he was getting all his therapy all his education everything he was getting everything was going well and then uh, uh, madam covid i call it i call uh, uh, this um, uh, auntie corona <laughs> i call uh, her she came into our life, into everybody's lives, came into the world and changed our lives for, I don't know, for how long, you know. Uh, it was the second shock that we got. Schools closed. Uh, we didn't know what to do. Renver was, my son Renver was back home and it was back to square one where from morning to evening he would be at home with us. Now, what do we do? We can't take him out. Uh, Covid uh, regulations specify that you have to be indoors. Uh, what do I do with him indoors? All the time from morning till night or 24-7. What do I do with him? So it was, it's, it's a big challenge for us. We are struggling with it. We thought that within one or two months it will get all right, it will get over. At least something would open. But uh, of course things are open but not the schools and colleges. We are at our uh, wits end. We are tired. We don't know what to do, how to manage with him. We don't have the facilities that a special educate, uh, educate uh, a special school has. We don't have them at home. So we are trying our level best. We are coping, managing with the situation, but it's very very frustrating. It is near suicidal. Uh, it's it's a very draining. It's very stressful. It's full of tension. <laughs> uh, I don't know really what to say. You know, I only wish and pray that this thing, uh, uh, everything stops. We come back to our normal lives again and then we goes back to his former pre-COVID days uh, routine. Yeah, I think the routine is very important for these special children. They believe in routines and that keeps their mind uh, and their phys uh, physique uh, occupied. Now, uh, given that he's 25 years old and you have retired, uh, you, what is the main thing on your mind right now? Uh, main the most there are, there are uh, two or three ma major things on my mind now since I am also getting old and uh, won't be there forever Renmo will be uh, becoming older uh, three major things in my mind is uh, one is the society you know uh, the the indifference of society towards this towards these children. Um, insensitivity of the society towards these children. Uh, that's one. Second is uh, the government. Uh, what is the government doing for our children? Our children, I mean our special children. What are they doing? A third is uh, when I uh, when I pass away, you know, what happens to my son Renwa? Uh, who will take care of him? Uh, what will happen? These are my three major worries, uh, Brian. And uh, these, are, these are the three major worries that you had and uh, that is what prompted you to write an article on newskarnataka.com and which I yes. think has also been sent to the Prime Minister's office. Correct. Yes. 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 I also send uh, uh, mails uh, to the Prime Minister's office to all the email IDs. In fact, it went a little viral, I would think, because I had sent it to all my contacts on WhatsApp. So all the contacts also had sent messages and emails to the Prime Minister's email IDs and all that. So. Uh, that has been done. Yeah, I just want to refer to that article because yeah. you have made some very good suggestions. And I just want to just, uh, uh, you know, talk to you about those okay, suggestions. Okay. You, yes, have, yes. you have mentioned um, about the government. Uh, basically, when the censuses and all are taken, 
<laughs> I, and I think uh, when you have uh, job reservations, yeah, there is yes. no provision meant for children uh, of, uh, true, like mentally true. retarded or with multiply challenged. Uh, they are not considered uh, physically handicapped, they are not considered blind or visually impaired, uh, they are not considered any other, any other ha type of hand handicap, hearing impaired. Uh, so, they do not fall in any category, they are considered Correct. normal, but Correct. in society they cannot function as normal. Absolutely. So, right. I think you have written to the government, you have written in the article that uh, the government should take special note of this. Uh, is Correct. that right? That is right, very right, very right. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, let us start at the, uh, let us start with, with the very, very, very important aspect of this. You know, I was really shocked out of my wits, you know, when uh, the census people came, they come once in 10 years, you know, for the survey. And they said, uh, how many children, after all the questions, like, you know, how many children, I said, uh, one, said, uh, normal hai ka handicapped hai? I said, wo handicapped hai. Um, matlab, kya hai, wo blind hai, nahi hai, uh, dumb hai, no, uh, polio, no, haan, thik hai, wo to, phir, uh, handicapped nahi hai, wo normal hai. I said, tum kya baat kar hai? What are you, what are you saying? He is mentally challenged, uh, he is a neurological brain damaged child. He said, nee, nee, sir, yaap, either kuch likha nahi hai, wo to normal hai. Uh, I got a shock, I said, uh, uh, I just didn't know what hit me and then I realized that yes, you know, for the government has got no idea about these special children, these neural, uh, these uh, uh, mentally handicapped children, no idea. They have idea only of those three, deaf, dumb and uh, polio. Then I realized what will the government do and how will the government address this issue because they themselves don't know that there are brain damaged children in the, in the country and how many, what, no idea at all. So this is one aspect which all of us, I think the society, me should, you know, try to bring it to the government's notice, should come up with some movement, you know, otherwise the government is not going to address the issue unless uh, that pressure is put on the government and I would like to really tell the people this is a very burning issue that we have in our country of these special children mentally challenged, you may call them differently abled, multiply challenged, uh, special children, neurological brain damage children, whatever you may call them. Now these kind of children, they are uh, normally sent to special schools because they do not fit into any other school. Correct, correct. Now what happens is the normal children, the so called normal children and the special children do not intermingle. They do not get a chance because obviously the special schools are somewhere else and correct, the correct. normal schools are somewhere else. Correct. I correct. think you have mentioned in your uh, article yes, that yes. perhaps in the regular schools itself if they can have a special wing. Yes. So that at some point of time the the children get to see what a special child goes through Correct. and in turn the special child gets to mingle with other regular children. Yes. Now they will not be studying the same thing, they will not be able to, they will not be able to uh, intermingle completely but if a special wing is there in the same campus, yes. perhaps, perhaps sensitization will be much better. Is that right, what you right, mentioned? Right. We'll come back to government later. Yeah. This, uh, yes, very much, very true Brian. Uh, in fact, you know, it is a big fallacy what they, what they call, you know, uh, like um, whenever I meet normal pe ch parents or normal ch people, they, they tell, see there is a special school there, special school there, you know. It is now that I realized, you know, that we do not, re we require special school for training the child, but for interaction with society and if the, if the child has to develop you know, the societal skills, you know, the child has to be interacting with normal children, not with the, not with the children who are mentally challenged, not with the, with their own segment. Uh, for example, my child, Renver, you know, on the spectrum, on a, on a, on a spectrum, if, uh, uh, you know, lowest is, uh, uh, say, 95% damaged and uh, the other end of the spectrum is, you know, mildly damaged, 5%. My son is, say, uh, uh, is say 95 percent sort of okay, you know, uh, he is not that that bad like the other people. Now, if he is put with children who are 90 percent uh, damaged, you know, or uh, very low, you know, on the scale, then he is going to copy them, you know, uh, he is not going to develop. This is what happened in my case, you know, he would come home because uh, the other kids are rolling on the ground, he would come home and roll on the ground. Other child is putting thumb in the mouth, he would put thumb in the mouth. 
Now, my son Renbo didn't require that environment. He required a normal environment. So, I started, you know, uh, bring up this issue or this cause of of interaction with normal uh, children. Even in schools, they can have uh, this this integration can happen of these children. I, I don't say all brain damaged children. You have to evaluate them and see if that particular brain damaged child can benefit from integration then yes then you but that facility is not there now so one aspect is to look at that particular facility of integration now that is for the schools but what about you Brian and society at large even you all can do integration you know why only the schools whenever I go to my building none of them interact with my child in fact they say Wo pagal hai. in fact I was shocked and I was very hurt when parents tell their children small children in fact you know Wo Renver is mad Wo pagal hai. You know, don't, don't mix with him is that the way to bring up your children is that the way to sensitize your children with uh, who are tomorrow you may get a child like this you know so uh, I'm looking I'm, I'm, I want society you know to come forward and fill in that gap you know of integration and don't leave it only to the schools or to the government of course government is not doing anything right now but i i'm sure if you come up with a movement the government also will do something and should do something because mind you my my dear friends you know it is said that one in ten children born are now born special that means having a neurological uh, problem deficit. and yeah deficit and a brain damage and i believe uh, studies have been shown that uh, it is only going to worsen it may become 2 in 10 uh, so it's high time the government takes recognition of this i think we start a movement the media can help in, in this and the government recognize it and do something uh, for these special children uh, there is a the point that uh, one of the points that you made in the article was uh, residential facilities for people of, of special uh, special children especially whose parents uh, or siblings or whoever is taking care of them can no longer manage the situation. Now, of course, those facilities are few and far between. There are available, but mainly uh, at the NGO level Correct. and uh, small, small islands. Um, but as you said, the problem is rather huge. And uh, because the government does not have the census to actually evaluate the number of such children, I think it's a little difficult for the government to come up with such facilities. So Correct. the first step, of course, is to evaluate the numbers. Numbers and put and in then, the census. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the second is they need to work on something providing these facilities for parents of these kind of children, not just to leave them there, but when they are unable to manage the situation themselves, then the government and society in partnership, of course, need to take care of it. That's setting the point, one of the points that you had made in the article. Correct, absolutely, absolutely. My major, my major worry is what happens to Renver when, uh, when um, uh, we die, we pass away. You know, who's going to take care of him? Uh, a, there's a major difference uh, between old age homes for the normal people and for the uh, special, uh, differently abled uh, children. I call them children, but when they become a differently abled adults, like I would uh, like to uh, call them. Uh, uh, the normal old age people they can take care of themselves you know they no need to worry they no need of course people having sickness and that is fine you know they may have to be looked after uh, paralyzed uh, old uh, people and all that but uh, I'm not talking about that I'm talking about you know uh, even at a young age when they're going there you know they are differently able they don't know what they don't know they can't they can't fend for themselves they can't look after themselves and this is a major cause of concern uh, even if there are these places where I can leave my child you know how the major concern for me is how uh, how dependable are those places because our, uh, the, uh, these adults uh, would be vulnerable okay anything can happen they have to be uh, they have to be uh, taken care of in a proper manner so how dependable so that is another cause of worry not only of centers being there old age home centers being there also are those centers dependable can i trust them can like you say can you can i trust my child with that particular person with a stranger can i trust my son who is an adult of course 
there with those with that uh, center or those people that is one question which also needs to be addressed i am sure it must be addressed but it has to be kept in mind so if these type of trust were these centers keep coming up and i think they should come up then we parents of a special children i think will have less tension but uh, i don't know how many such centers are there there are one or two few centers are there in mangalo i think one is there uh, two are there i think but i'm not very sure the main problem that we face brian mm. you know is wherever i've been to in bombay and in uh, mangalo also that the first question they ask is is the child uh, bathroom trained you know like potty trained you know mm. can he take care of that aspect you know uh now the i i said supposing he is not you know he, he, he it is not that it's question of training it is the problem of his capacity of understanding whether he can uh, we can whether he can uh, do that particular routine uh, routine you know if he cannot and if he cannot be taught then what what happens they said no if he is not potty trained and bathroom trained then uh, we we can't take we will not take go somewhere else so everybody says go somewhere else but where the somewhere else do we go you know what uh, how does a parent uh, i'm talking behalf of everybody all parents whose children are, are, are difficult to potty train where will they go when when uh, they become big what what happens to them so my earnest uh, no doubt you keep having let more and more uh, old age homes for differently abled adults keep coming up also if this speciality uh, speciality or any aged home that comes up if you can give a thought to this and admit you know adults who are not also potty trained then i think you would have completed the circle and the entire segment of brain damage Uh, adults or differently abled adults would have been addressed and taken care of. Okay, I I want to take it to a different uh, angle. Yeah. Uh, normally, when you have a child of this nature, there are financial uh, implications, obviously. And uh, as of now, uh, there is no government uh, uh, subst- subsistence or subsidy uh, or uh, intervention or uh, anything that will help you uh, mitigate those financial issues. uh corporates the private private sector also i think does not have any not such that. thing True. and i think one of the things that you mentioned in your article is that the government can look at giving some sort of uh, financial assistance in these cases to the parents of such children for again for which they need the numbers correct and correct. Uh, corporates where private because after all the parents are definitely talented and they'll be working for various corporates correct of course Very they true. may be having their own businesses also True. but True. in case they are working for corporates the corporates could uh give a special allowance to such uh, children so that which can be put in the name of the child and uh, as it grows and as the child grows true, there is true. something to fall back on true when when things are not so good absolutely uh, absolutely yeah, brian yeah. very true and uh, that is another biggest problem that uh, we are facing uh we have nothing you know uh, we don't even have like you have insurance for so many other uh, uh Uh, so many other uh, aspects of life but this aspects there is no insurance you know uh, if the government can look at having a special insurance policy for uh, children with the uh, brain damage children uh, with neurological problems you know that is one of the first steps that they can. but there is it's a huge thing uh, if you ask me at the moment there's nothing i cannot go to anybody i cannot go anywhere of course the charity donation is a different aspect is a different issue altogether i am talking of a proper structure like you have abroad now special children abroad the government takes care of everything the parents don't have to worry even if the parents die also they will be taken care of everything is taken care of by the government the parents do not have to worry at all all they have to worry is about their normal children but here in india it is not the case you know i have to worry for everything uh even the only thing that people advise me is you know you form a trust for this children when you pass away but that trust i only have to provide for you know there are, there is no no one is helping helping us financially nobody is helping and mind you you know looking after a special child is not a easy task it is a very expensive proposition you know uh, so uh, 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 help uh, financial help is welcome you know Uh, and uh, if financial help is there we can do more for the child let me put it that way you know we can help the child more 
and uh, so there are a lot of things which uh, need to be taken care of financial assistance is one really good idea if that can happen for the school fees or for the medical expenses or if uh, one good idea could be you know and and uh, i would don't mind being the initiator of that or helping in that because i've retired and i've got time on my hands if society the government or the corporates or any individual a benefactor or an individual who wants to do good if they can come up with a a, a fund you know a, a funding for these children for the special children you know i think that would be a, a step in the right direction and would it would help a lot of a lot of uh, parents who cannot afford who, who are uh, who are can less afford you know is not the question of affordability uh, the the rich people will not come to you you know but people who cannot afford you know if they come to you and you can have the facility i think it would uh, really really help so that that financial burden that tension of that finances is not there with the parent and they can focus on something else um yeah um, i think you have covered most of the points that you have mentioned in your uh, article uh society support of course is required uh, in terms of um, providing psychosocial support to the parents and the child and i think that is available generally uh, in society but maybe it comes as a at a cost uh, these free facilities are not so much available so people without means will find it very difficult but parents are parents and they love their children as much as any other child very true very and true. Uh, you cannot escape from that for us a child is a child true. but if the government and society can support us in some way or the other then uh, it will make our life much easier uh, financially is major you know that obviously uh, it's financial the financial the main, main cause i've, the I've fin- seen yeah yeah, yeah. financially uh, if the government can support or uh, the corporates can support through an allowance these are important things and providing of facilities of course the physical facilities i want to give one message uh, to society uh, and to the normal people you know to everybody that don't think of big things start small you know if you can help us you know for example if you can uh, now whole day i am with my son i need a break if you can come and say okay, okay rick uh, we'll take run run for for an hour you relax that would be a great starting point if you can say renvo likes likes drives okay eric uh, we'll take renvo for a drive we'll play the music we'll take him for a drive one hour two hours you relax you know if uh, you all can say we'll form a group of all children adults you know and come on let's go and uh, uh, take renvo and let's spend time with renvo you know all normal children normal adults spend spend time with him and don't treat him like a like a special child treat him like normal play the music let him dance you all also dance play games let him also play games if you all can do this and this way there are many other uh, things also like uh, t- you can take him to a hotel restaurant 10 or 5 of you all can take him let him see what a restaurant hotel is because we have never gone to a hotel restaurant we have never gone for a for a movie of course movie will be difficult because he may make noise and all that but these other things take him for a drive take him uh, take him with you uh, uh, giving us one hour you know uh, free time if you can begin with this you know and and this will be will go to a great extent in helping us and relieve us and this would really be helpful to all of us a parents of a special child so he is he is not just referring to renwar he is talking about all children in that situation and parents in that situation so a little bit of help in small ways after all a drop in the ocean makes many drops make an ocean so uh, i know it's been a very painful uh, interview eric but sometimes it's necessary if the <laughs> message true, yes. if the message has to reach the right uh, quarters uh, i thank you for coming on the show and explaining uh, your situation so that others will also come to know that there are situations like this which maybe sometimes we should think that we are blessed and we do not have to face but uh, viewers please note the various problems that some people in our society face and we should be open to helping them i urge you to read the article on newskarnataka.com and uh, try and take it further with the with with people that you know in the government in society people who can do something for 
parents of these special children and for the special children themselves. Thank you very much, Eric, for joining me on the show. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. All the best. Yeah. I hope something comes out of this. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You.